earlier this week, the equally... What happened to, hello, how are you? My name is, what happened to that? Well, I welcome you all to another episode of QFIX Weekly Show. My name is Edwin Austin. By calling me QFIX, you still get to have my undivided attention. I will be your host. Earlier this week, okay, probably end of last week, the equally celebrated and controversial Kenyan comedian, Eric Omondi, also known as the president of Comedy Africa, if not uh, Ezekiel's best friend. <laughs> well, he made some huge moves in Tanzania. In his first stadium tour in Tanzania, Eric got to entertain over 40,000 people alone for seven hours and made over 3.6 million Kenya shillings in profits back. Our goal here is not to underscore Eric's ability to move a crowd or the money that he actually made from this particular event. Our concern is the number of people that actually turned up. A single man brought together over 40,000 foreigners, and yet here we are, struggling to amass over 100 YouTube subscribers for crying out loud. <laughs> May the powers that be look into this matter. Well, for all his setbacks, and uh, believe me, he has had quite a few, well, uh, I do believe that Eric deserved that great win and uh, even the millions that came alongside with it, you know? And uh, talking of wins and millions, Calligraph Jones, the baddest rapper in Nigeria, <laughs> also made a huge win for the hip-hop industry. After announcing he would be giving three artists a chance to do a record deal under his label, that is a Blue Ink Cop, and uh, doing something that most of us don't do, you know, putting our money where our mouth is, <laughs> when uh, the Ugaliman sponsors decided to join Calligraph in his noble cause and uh, topped his initial 500 thousand contribution with a whooping 4.5 million Kenya shillings. Well, we do not know the limits of Odibet's advertising budget, but uh, we do know that the chances of them seeing this particular show and are probably considering to give us a call, those chances are not entirely insignificant. Let's shift continents for a minute here. Jeff Bezos, he is the founder of Amazon, the founder of Blue Origin, the owner of the Washington Post, and uh, probably even the owner of QFIX Weekly Show. <laughs> and most recently, he became the newest commercial astronaut in town. On the 20th of July, Jeff Bezos, ten, nine, with a crew eight, that seven, included his brother, six, five, Mark Bezos, four, made the, the first the ever start. human flight Two, with Blue Origin one. to space. The flight lasted uh, ten, over 10 minutes and uh, went to a peak altitude of 66.5 miles. Believe me when I tell you, the last time Jeff Bezos was this high, he was in college trying to decide on his major. Now, if Dan Cry's verified Twitter account is anything to go by, then uh, Jeff Bezos made uh, $1.13 billion from this 10-minute flight to space, which is literally the same amount that 36,000 full-time 
warehouse workers make in a year. And uh, by the way, I am not using literally the way most of you use literally. <laughs> I am literally using literally, literally. 36,000 full-time warehouse workers, what they make in a year, you take all that amount, combine it, that is what Jeff Bezos made from that 10 minute flight to space, which I guess is the whole, you know, sort of comes close to justifying the outpour of outrage and disparaging remarks that has been on the internet with uh, people terming this whole space thing as nothing but a childish pissing contest among these multi-billionaires. You know, the argument being that uh, the world is riddled with world hunger, poverty, not to mention the pandemic. And the best option for these movers and shakers, the best option they're finding is going to space. Well, that is their argument. What's yours? Although still on the part of verified accounts, then I would not rush to say anything with certainty simply because it's on a verified Twitter account because earlier this week, we have seen Twitter verify one of the parody accounts of Embakasi East Member of Parliament, Babu Wino. It was surprising, of course. Surprising even for the owner of this parody account himself because, I mean, <laughs> look at his bio. <laughs> Back to business. He is arguably the richest individual in the world in anyway. Well, before his space trip with a Blue Origin, space travel was not always as smooth and comfortable as they made it look, you know? Back in the days, and I'm talking about back then when blackboards were still black. <laughs> well, back then, capsules used to have uh, very small windows that are uh, made those inside look that they're, like they are deprived of, you know, air, not comfort. Anyone who watched Blue Origins capsule go to space, then uh, you will agree with me when I say that, honestly, this was a different ball game. This capsule had one of the most enormous windows you could ever think of. It had uh, reclining chairs and uh, probably, who knows, Maybe Jeff Bezos had one of those Harry Potter's novels that he used to sell from his garage back then when the name Amazon was still small and odd sounding as the name Qfix. It would be remiss on my part if I failed to mention that uh, Jeff Bezos was accompanied by more individuals in this 10 minute space trip which is actually half the same amount of time it takes your crush, who is online, who is online, <laughs> to reply to your text. That is if at all they do. But, uh, <laughs> and yes, I do acknowledge that this whole thing is all about, you know, this business magnet that is Jeff Bezos and his unremitting persistence in getting where he is. And yet, I do find the need to acknowledge the presence of Wally Funk, who was among the people in that space trip. She is an 82-year-old astronaut who was denied the chance to go to space purely because she was a woman. Those that denied Wally Funk the chance to go to space back then when she was a young lady full of ambition and college debt, <laughs> Those that denied her that chance are probably looking from above. Okay, maybe from below. And uh, they are sharing in the thought that uh, the 20th of July was not just a day for Jeff Bezos, but a uh, Wally Funk Day as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the pandemic is still a present danger to all of us. Simply because you're going to Java and Target these days does not mean that the danger is over. 
the pandemic is still there. Well, uh, this has necessitated a surge in the demand for COVID-19 vaccines. And uh, as you might probably expect, many people have tried to come up with some ingenious ways of creating placebos in the name of COVID-19 vaccines and actually selling it to the people. Now, I know I said people, but uh, the truth is before the vaccines can actually get to the people, the first people that buy these vaccines are the nations. So if anyone is to be conned first, it's not the individual receiving this vaccine, but the country per se. One of the countries that has fallen victim of the same is Uganda. It is one of the few African countries that a Kardashian has toured, as well as the country which, uh, if there was an award for the most athletic head of state, then their president would have bugged the thing already. <laughs> Experts have confirmed that Uganda received water for COVID-19 vaccines, and honestly, I could leave this at that. The mere suggestion that a country could receive water for COVID-19 vaccines would be laughable if it wasn't so horribly true. And uh, I must admit that uh, after reading this particular news article, you know, from Uganda, for all its honesty and diluted corruption, then uh, I was moved to wonder what other country, either in East Africa or beyond, could have received the same vaccine you know, I guess we all know where my guests landed. Still on COVID-19 vaccines and their scarcity. Larry Madowo, one of uh, Kenya's most ubiquitous journalists and currently a CNN international correspondent. Yes, international correspondent. He was promoted. Larry, give me a call. I would like to know what you're on. On a piece on CNN, Larry Madowo wrote this. Some Americans are even getting bribed with beer and donuts or cash to get COVID-19 shots when many Africans would happily take them for free if they were available. While the world's wealthiest appear to be entering a post-pandemic life, the rest of us in the global south are still in the throes of a devastating crisis with no way out for the foreseeable future. Larry Madowo lost his uncle to COVID-19 last month, leaving him and the other family members with the agonizing thought of how different things would have been if his uncle received one of those COVID-19 jabs. And, but was still for Larry, his grandma, who is aged 96, is still in hospital and has been there for five weeks, battling for her life since she also has covid and is on a ventilator. It's very bad that uh, some countries out there have enough vaccines to vaccinate their whole population five to eight times over, when other African countries like Kenya per se and even South Sudan are still nibbling in mediocrity. I call upon these developed countries to kindly extend your vaccine lages to Africa. That way, as it must to all men, then death will only come to Africans through more relatable ways. You know, like hunger and heartbreak. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of our today's Fix weekly show episode. It has been a joy, a delight to be precise having you here today. All that is left to say from the QFIX desk is Mucha Gracias. <laughs>